I'll level with you, Axel. I'm tempted to put Mr. Kilroy in charge, but it looks bad for the family image. The Foreign Service is my whole life. Just, just give me a chance to prove myself once and for all. What can go wrong in two weeks? You had them in, you were in Brazil for two weeks, and you had them importing coffee. <laughs> Dad, I know how much this governorship means to you, and I will see to it that this embassy remains a credit to your record. The only important guest we will be having in the next few weeks is the Sultan of Bashir. I'll see that the Sultan gets royal treatment. You sure will, Axel. I'm on the verge of concluding a major oil deal with the Sultan, that will make me a very big man next November. Axel, most fathers start their sons in the mail room and let them work their way up. I started you on top, and you worked your way down to the mail room. <laughs> this embassy is a clean start for you. If it's not run letter perfect, I'll fire you. And if your own father fires you, it's the end of the line. Goodbye. Have a good flight, Dad. Mr. Kilroy. Oh, Mr. Kilroy. Mr. Kil... You called? For the next two weeks, I am in charge of this embassy. Business will go on as usual, and it would mean a great deal to me to have your full cooperation. Your father should have known better than to place in charge a man who is asked to leave Africa. That is not fair. Some of the best men in the Foreign Service have, at one time or another, been recalled from a country. Continent. Africa is a continent. You have been recalled from an entire continent. And what about Japan? You never mentioned that. Or the Soviet Union. You managed to cover that one up too. You know that I have had some bad breaks, career-wise. And you were hung up in effigy in Panama. I admitted I was. Yes, but you didn't say it was by our own embassy. <laughs> Hello? Yes. Yes, this is the American embassy. Oh, no. Ambassador McGee is not here. He's on his way back to the United States. I'm Axel McGee. I'm in charge during his absence. What the hell was that? It's the communist police. They're chasing three people. They look like tourists. Mr. McGee, they're running up the steps of the embassy. Well, we better open the front door quickly. Help! We're American tourists. The communists are after us. They think we're spies. We're Americans, I swear. Willie Mays. Boss, Kate Smith! I pledge allegiance to the flag! And to the republic for which it stands! It's the communist police! So vacation! Run! Of. Missile sites and a rocket installation. They have seen too much. They must die. <laughs> um, Mr. McGee, they're setting up searchlights and machine guns around the embassy. I'm sure that they did not. <laughs> Look, I'll, uh, I'll give you the film. In fact, <laughs> I'll give you the whole camera. Hand them over to us, or we will drag them out and I shoot them. <laughs> this embassy is United States territory. Nobody can be dragged out of here and shot 
without the written consent of the American government. Leave these premises at once. Your behavior is an extreme violation of international conduct. <laughs> Who are you? I'm Axel McGee. I am in charge of this embassy during my father's absence. And I order you to leave at once. Guns or no guns, if you don't leave, Mr. Kilroy will throw you out. <laughs> Mr. McGee, something is happening. Yes, Hatami, I know. There are soldiers surrounding the embassy. They are staring into the kitchen. They won't hurt you. I can't do work if I'm being stared at. I'm just that kind of a person. Who are you? I am a personal chef to Ambassador McGee, former chef to the King of the Norway, former chef at the White House, former chef to the Queen of England. Before that, I did very little cooking. Don't you terrorize our help. I had a cake in the oven. Your gunshots made it a fall. Mr. McGee, stand firm. I'll lodge a formal protest. You stand firm. I'll lodge... Look, <coughs> you spy on us. We spy on you. Everybody knows it. Why do we suddenly pretend that it's just so unusual? <laughs> you do spy on us. How often? All the time. <laughs> Espionage goes on between our countries every day. It's no secret. Why be so hypocritical about it? He does, huh? And are they spies? No. Well, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> How do you know they are not spies? You've never seen them before. Are you going to tell me that your country doesn't send spies into the United States posing as tourists. Then you admit they are spies? What if they are? That does not give you the right to enter this building illegally. You're going to start an international incident. This is not just an outrage, but a vicious and cruel attack on the whole free world. I wouldn't be surprised if France took our side. Mr. Krojak, I have your Foreign Affairs Office on the phone. They want you to report back immediately. He had admitted they are spies. <laughs> you didn't, Mr. McGee. Oh, well, I mean... He admitted it. I have it all here on <laughs> I did in a sense. Mr. Kilroy, you know... We spy, they spy... We do nothing of the sort! <laughs> well, actually, we do. And, and if we are, if we all just stop being so hypocritical about it, and just be honest That's for once... enough, Mr. McGee. We do spy. Will you speak louder, please? <laughs> now look, don't you go twisting my words or anything. I mean, you come barging in here with guns. And then you wonder why a brutal dictatorship gets a bad name. <clears throat> the embassy will be surrounded. From this day on, the spies will either come out or spend the rest of their lives in here. But first, the world will hear this confession. Goodbye for now. How could you do it? How could you admit they were spies? I panicked. I lost control. What were you thinking? I was thinking, don't panic. Don't lose control. <laughs> you! Who? Yeah! You with the vest! Why did you tell them we're spies? Walter, be careful. He's always eavesdropping. <laughs> How could you tell them we're spies? They said we're spies. He tells them yes. All of a sudden, I'm a spy. I'll go on what's my mind. They'll never guess. Where's my daughter? I'll get her. Chef, bring the girl up from the basement. Yes, Chef, bring the girl up from the basement. What are you, his echo? Oh, to be quiet. Those lunatics out there accuse us of spying, and this lunatic says yes. Now, if you were listening to the conversation, you should know that I was trying to calm them down. First, no movie on the plane, then this. 
It's a simple misunderstanding. How simple? If we leave the building, they kill us. Simple enough? Don't jump to conclusions. There'd be a trial first. <laughs> Who is this guy? I'd better call your father. Maybe I can stop him at the airport. There's no need for that. I can handle a crisis. Handle one? Ha! You are one! A man takes his family on vacation. He wants to show them a good time. This is what we have working in our government. Then they wonder why I don't vote. I've got to make out a report. Well, that's what you get for taking pictures. It's my vacation. My new hobby is photography. Am I interested in the missiles and rockets? All I want to do is take some pictures. I wonder if your photos are valuable. He held the camera backwards and pictures of his nose. <laughs> I've got to get my head examined. Every time I listen to you, I wind up behind the eight ball. Here we go again. If you would have listened to me, we would have taken a cabana on Atlantic Beach. Every year it must be Atlantic Beach. What's the matter? They need you to work the tide? No! We have to go to Europe. $3,500 for three weeks of uninterrupted diarrhea. <laughs> What's so terrible? My brother went to Europe last year. He had a wonderful time here. I'm tired of living for your brother. I have to run my life by her brother. That's a hot one. I realize you're upset. If I could just get some facts. Mr. and Mrs. Walter Hollander, Newark, New Jersey. You want to know the facts? The facts are I have a three-week vacation. I said let's take a cabana at Atlantic Beach. There's sun. You can play pinnacle. There's miniature golf. No, her brother says. Go to Europe. And behind the Iron Curtain, no less. I needed this like a hole in the head. Aren't you interested in how the other half lives? We went with you to see the Folies Bergère in Paris. Are you comparing communism to those girls? As if he appreciates Europe any place. We took him to Westminster Abbey. His feet hurt. We took him to St. Peter's in Rome. He got dizzy from looking up. We took him to the Louvre. I hate to tell you what happened. It's pronounced Louvre. Louvre. That's how much you know. In the Louvre. He struck a match across a Van Gogh. I thought I'd die. Have either of you two ever had any respiratory ailments? <laughs> oh, wrong forms. It began with my brother. Quite a lovely individual. He's a Nazi. Do you know what you're talking about? Take my word for it. He should be wearing an armband. Here we are, seeking asylum. I'm not seeking asylum. I didn't do anything. I'm a caterer from New Jersey. I'll need your passports, and I have to get some information. I'm giving you information. It began with my brother. Quite a lovely individual. They should have hung him at Nuremberg. <laughs> have you ever bought anything on credit? Oh, sorry, wrong forms again. My brother went to Europe last year. He had a wonderful time here. He suggested we bring my daughter. It's cultural. My brother's an intellectual. Some intellectual, like Rocky Balboa. <laughs> and you are just a caterer? I mean, nobody paid you to take pictures of anything or anything like that. Hollander and Blackwell. One is the new one. Uh, here's my car. Do you work, Mrs. Hollander? No, sir. I'm an average housewife. Uh, some housewife? She's a professional mahjong hustler. She carries around her own tiles. And you accidentally wandered into a restricted area? I mean, you didn't sneak in or anything. I told him it looked like private property, but he had to get a photograph. He said, why? Because there's cards and dogs and barbed wire? I said, yeah, because there's cards and dogs and barbed wire. What did you think it was, a place that sold cards and dogs and barbed wire? Then they chased you, and you had the good sense to come here? My daughter had the presence of mind. She did the right thing, Mrs. Hollander. Sure! So you could tell them we're spies. My wife should not have to go through with this. She's not a young woman. <laughs> On the one hand, we want to protect you. 
On the other hand, we want to protect the best interests of the United States. I always thought they went hand in hand. I'm an old woman. I didn't mean old. <laughs> I meant the young old. But there's nothing to worry about. Sure, because I'm a caterer, not a spy. Creative catering, our specialty. We were the first to make bridegrooms out of potato salad. He does lovely work, I'll say that for him. Last month, we did a wedding reception. We did the bride's body in jello, her head in a very nice clam dip, with RuPaul spouting out of her throat. It was a class affair. I should have this settled within a few days. Uh, what do you mean? What do you think I'm gonna do? Live here? It may require some effort, but we are going to show those communists that their police state tactics do not work. I'll have Mr. Kilroy see if we have some spare cots. Cots? I will not sleep on a cot. I'm a dignified human being with a hernia. <laughs> It's an emergency, Mr. Hollinger, and we'll try our best. I got a business to run. Sam Blackwell can't run the firm. He's the inside man. I'm the outside man. It requires personality. Mr. Hollinger, was there some sort of notebook in your suitcase back in the hotel? Was some sort of party list on it? No. Oh, yes, uh, the Levine wedding estimate. What is that? The Levine wedding? How many from the bride's side? How many from the groom's side? How much roast beef? How much grapefruit? The communist police say they've been working on it and they've broken the code. What code? <laughs> Supply information and troop movements. Troop movements? That's the Levine and the Wassermans. There's more Levines because she's paying for the wedding and they eat like an army. But they're civilians. It's that damn Crowjack trying to frame you. I can't stay here. It's the height of the season. I got weddings coming up. I got receptions. I got coming out parties. Sam Blackwell can't handle it by himself. He lacks my charm. So we'll have his son come in and help out. He's over 21. His son? <laughs> Who's gonna dress him? Your business can manage for a few days. Yeah? You think so? And now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to America. Where's my hat? Mr. McGee, what do you think's gonna happen? Let them capture me. I'm a caterer. This is preposterous. They want information? I'll tell them how to make grapefruit sections. <laughs> Mr. Hollander, you can't go out there. Let him go out there. Go ahead, big shot. We'll be in here if you want us. Go ahead. There's a front door. Now look, you don't think I you. won't! Go ahead! Stop talking already and do it! Mrs. Hollander, don't start trouble! You think I'm afraid of those guys? No! <laughs> What's to be afraid of? They're only secret police. They'll arrest you and torture you. What's to be frightened of? You think I'm afraid to walk out? No, go ahead. Get brainwashed. In your case, it'll probably help. <laughs> I strongly urge you not to do anything rash. Let him go. Go ahead. Go. Uh, do you know if uh, any of those guys belong to the Masons? I've been hiding down in the basement. Mr. McGee, this is my daughter Susan. She was a cesarean. How do you do? She gave birth twice. 
I wasn't even worried about Seth. He's at camp. Camp ends tomorrow? If we're not back to let him in, what's gonna happen? He'll be unsupervised. He'll live in the streets. He'll run amok. He'll rape and loot. You know our son. He takes after your brother. Oh. I just thought of something. Susan's getting married next week. Huh? That's right. I have a deposit on the hall. Getting married, huh? Oh well, I guess you must be really anxious to get out of here. That's a long story, Mr. McGee. Let's not discuss it. The date's been set. Well, we may have to push the date back a bit. So you better call the owner of the Renaissance Luau and get our deposit back. You better call Donald. He'll be worried sick. I'll call. Mr. McGee, what's the longest anyone has ever had to stay here? <laughs> Um, we gave asylum to a priest who's been living upstairs, uh, a while. What's a while? Oh, well, you know, a while. How long? Six years. Six years? I said, let's go to Atlantic Beach. We'll swim, we'll play pinochle. No, her brother says, go to Europe. May he rest in peace. He's not dead. He will be. Look, Mr. Kilroy, I have been on the phone for the past six hours with Washington, with their embassy, with the UN. The whole picture has become clear to me now. What whole picture? It's all over the American press. This morning, the FBI captured this country's top secret agent, Adolf Lopert, the Gray Fox. The? Great Fox? One of their most brilliant spies. They caught him posing as a student at Berkeley. <laughs> Apparently, the Reds went after the first American tourist they could find. In retaliation. Now I suppose you want to do a spy trade. Adolf Loper for the Hollanders? Washington won't hear of it. They're outraged. I wonder if that's the way it's going to be from now on. Every time you arrest one of their spies, they arrest one of our caterers. <laughs> I need a cement. Mr. Hollander is driving me crazy. He hates European food! <laughs> Mr. McGee, are you aware that the Sultan of Bashir is due here? Friday? I suggest you postpone it for a more auspicious moment. Nonsense, Mr. Kilroy. <laughs> I should have this cleared up by Friday. And if you don't? If I don't, business will go on as usual. I am running this embassy! Mr. McGee? Yes! <laughs> Mr. Kilroy, please. I am awfully sorry about your accommodations, but we are jammed and it is temporary. Mr. McGee? I hope you're not upset by my parents. Upset? They're really sweet people. They just have their own way of expressing themselves. And don't let their form of communication throw you. Listen, you don't have to explain parents to me. I have two parents. Well, I had two parents. My mother's in court trying to disown me. <laughs> Mr. Kilroy explained to us that your father's ambassador, McGee. Did he also tell you that if I don't make it here, I'm finished? Oh, it's not that bad. Everybody makes mistakes. Every time I pick up the papers, I read about another diplomatic crisis cropping up somewhere in this world. Have you noticed my name's in every article? <laughs> Funny. <laughs> You're just the opposite of Donald. Who's Donald? He's my fiancé. He's so confident. I'm totally in command. Well, I'm confident, too. Between major international blunders. Well, I don't know about anybody else, but I'm beginning to like it here. Gee, it's awfully sweet of you to take that attitude. I really appreciate it. I mean it. It's very exciting. 
and romantic. <laughs> Most people spend their whole lives without anything like this ever happening to them. So your father keeps telling me. Danger <laughs> excites me. <laughs> Do you know how many babies were born in England during World War II as a result of the Blitz? Well, if it's danger you want, I mean, take a look out there. Must be two dozen professional killers. It's hard to see much. Here, knock off that light. <laughs> You'll be able to see all the guards and secret police. Oh, sure. Look at them out there. They've got machine guns. Are you married, Mr. McGee? One thing about my work is you don't usually get to meet any attractive American women. <laughs> oh, well, don't you have a girlfriend or something? <laughs> Actually, my work has caused me to travel a lot. Suddenly. <laughs> what do you do? Are you a model or an actress or something? <laughs> no. I danced in the New York City Center Ballet. And I was a folk singer. And I worked at a coffee house in Greenwich Village. Waitress? I repaired motorcycles. <laughs> right now, my big interest is painting. No kidding! I paint! You'd hate my work, though. It's all very abstract. I slash oil all over everything. And then, and then I run all over it with my sneakers. And, and I put my lunch on it. In fact, my lunch came in second at a showing in Cape Cod. I adore abstract art. Really? Well, I'm a big Jackson Pollock fan. His drippings best express my mental state. <laughs> After dinner, if you're interested, I'll show you a little statue I made out of some old automobile parts and a bedpan. I love it. <laughs> you know, you're, you're really very pretty. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Forgive me my intrusion on Mr. McGee, but I must know what is the decision for the dinner. What's the problem? It's him! Who? Mr. Hollander! Be nice to him. I'll see you at dinner. <laughs> and please say my name, Mr. No. Well, does he have any suggestion? Mr. McGee, we are 4,000 miles away from the United States. This is a communist country. It is 8 o'clock at night. Where do you expect me to get Sarah Lee Coffee Cake? What kind of place is this? Oysters? I will not eat oysters. They're alive when you eat them. I want my food dead. Not sick, not wounded, dead. It's too late to get anything to do. Here, have a nice piece of my beer. You must be joking. What's wrong with the beer? My recipe is one of the great secrets of European cooking. Really? Let's keep it that way. Mr. McGee, I have very little. If I had enough, I couldn't get to the market. There were soldiers that... I'm trying to understand, Mr. Hollander. Our menu here is particularly uh, elaborate uh, because we entertain guests from all over the world. All I want is a plain piece of boiled chicken. Walter, where did you get off to? You know what? I can't get a meal here. I'll come in the kitchen and make you something. Good. Madame, how do you live with this man? Do you force me to live? Don't worry, I know what he likes. I must warn you, madame. No one has ever been in my kitchen before. If you do anything to spoil the order of my spice rack, I don't know what to do. Do you hear me? I don't know what to do! <laughs> I spoke to Bonnie Silverman on the phone. Did you tell him not to drive to Newark Airport with the station wagon? Because we may be six years late. Mrs. Hollander, I wanted to speak to you about the phone. 
Naturally, you're free to use it. If you could limit your calls to a few dozen... This is nothing for her! She has to alert everyone in Newark, individually, like Paul Revere. I call the Kleins, and they'll take care of Seth till we get back. You couldn't find a worse couple? What's wrong with the Kleins? They do drugs! How do you know? I catered one of their parties. Mom, Dad, and I met. What a drop in Oh, what brings you down here? I had so much commotion today. And I met this young lady in their home upstairs. These are the Hollanders. They came here in much the same way you did six years ago. Are you refugees? Refugees? You know what I paid for this shirt? We were at the Vatican. We saw your boss. If it's for me, I'm free to talk. Hello? Yes. Yes, just a moment. I'd better take this inside. Excuse me. He's got a little tiny room on the top floor, and he practically never leaves it. Don't you go crazy? Ah, you may guess through the courtesy of your government that I do not wish to make myself nuisance. Can't you ever leave here? Only if there is some drastic change in national policy. <laughs> I hear many friends who could help me too. Escape. But my duty is to someday return and lead my people once again. But until you lead your people, you stay up in your bedroom? In recent years, I have developed hobby. And so it passes the lonely moments. Well, what do you do? A father draw is a magician. I've been practicing for years. Years! That's a wonderful hobby. <laughs> yeah. It's all I needed. Come on, Dad. Be a spark. Oh, I can't take any time. Walter, don't be rude. <laughs> Jack of spades. Wrong! Five of diamonds! Dear me! <laughs> Sorry. Father Drogni has all kinds of interesting things up there. Don't you, Father? Doves! I hear bite! Doves! I raise them. I transform them. Before your eyes! Oh, why don't you get some of your things? I'd love to see them. Really? Would you? Of course he would. Wouldn't you, Walter? Of course! Why do you think I had us trapped here? <laughs> I'll be right back. In the audience, in the audience, I'll do my rings in the, my silk handkerchief production and my vanishing billiards balls. Terrific! It's the Ed Sullivan Show! I'll be right down. Don't go away! Don't go away! Imagine staying in your room and practicing magic for six years. What about us, Walter? What if the same thing happens to us? Where do you compare? We're innocent tourists. He's a priest. I'm sure he could get out of here if he made some effort, but you know how it is with those guys. The one who suffers the most gets a promotion. <laughs> Mr. Hollander, I think we've solved your dinner problem. What? The chef is making you hair. What? Hair. What's hair? Rabbit. Pardon me? Hair is rabbit. It's the closest thing to chicken the chef could find. Rabbit? It's delicious. Buddy, rabbit. If you don't ask him, he eats what you put in front of him. You mean a rabbit? Like Peter Rabbit? If I told you it was chicken, you wouldn't know the difference. I will not eat my furry friends. It's like eating squirrels. Look, can't you order out? There must be a Chinese restaurant in town. I met! He's back! I could only get his small things, but it's enough for the first few hours of the show. Um, how many hours does the show last? Oh, this. Ooh! Oh, I want to 
I go home. I have dreamed of this moment for years. But, miracle, shall I start? Um, I don't know. Can you walk on water? My son is 12 years old. I won't see him again till he's 18. As you can observe, I have nothing up my robes. Isn't it wonderful, Walter? A tricky priest. Nothing in my books. Watch closely. I take this white dog and place it in here. Say the magic words. Ashandra. 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 And where there was previously a dove, voila! Where is my rabbit? I had a rabbit in here. Where is my rabbit? Rabbit! Rabbit! Mr. Rabbit! Funny, funny rabbit! What have you like, rabbit? How do you like it? The end of the medium. Well done. There's my rabbit! You want to see her? I want the rabbit! Now, just a minute. This is the United States Embassy, and I mean to run it like one. Give me the money! <laughs> Charges of espionage are ridiculous. They're American tourists, and we will not turn them over to you. No, you will not wait them out. They've been here five days, and they are prepared to stay five years if necessary. Don't threaten me, and don't threaten them. You know you're only doing this because we captured Adolf Lopert, your illustrious gray fox. You know, I wanted to... Hello? Hello? Boy, they're stinkers. <laughs> Mrs. Hollander, could you please remove that ironing board? Where should I iron? If I go in the kitchen, the chef starts to cry. If everyone could please go to their rooms. How much can a person keep locked up in a cloakroom? Listen, I'm worried about Walter. First he wrote his congressman, and he got back a mimeograph form letter. Then he wrote his senator, and he got back a mimeograph form letter. Then he wrote our son, and he got back a mimeograph form letter. I am okay. I am eating. I am getting plenty of rest. I will consider any suggestions you make. Your loving son, Seth. That's because he writes them three letters a day. He worries about that boy too much. And there is no need to send him food from Europe. Now, can you please remove the ironing board? Hello, Walter. <laughs> you see that? I said, hello, Walter. You see the look he gave me? Hello, Grouch. <laughs> oh, Mrs. Hollander, I wanted to tell you one more thing. Ah, uh, you should be here any minute. Who should? The Sultan of Bashir. Or did you forget? The Sultan? <laughs> well, wasn't that called off? I suggested we postpone it, but you assured everyone that you would have matters settled and that business would proceed as usual. Oh, hell! Let me think. You know, the Sultan is a dictator and a very temperamental man. Any little ripple can hurt your father's oil deal and... <laughs> I'd hate to be in your shoes if that ever happens. Maybe I can still call him and delay it. I got a telegram this morning. Sam Blackwell caters a sweet 16 party. I don't want to hear it. He gets a special price on the meats. I'm not interested. He doesn't use our regular guy, you hear? Tries to buy cheap. I'm not listening. Poor guests go home that night and what happened? They get food poisoning. Oh, my God. You're in the hospital because he looked for bargains. I'll bet they're suing. Aha! Now you want to hear. What are they? I don't want to tell you. You're not interested. Tell me. No. Listen. You're not interested. Why should I tell you? Tell me. <laughs> a foggy day. A Walter, day. you know what you are? You're a sadist. Why? 
A minute ago, you weren't interested. I'm not interested. You're not? Good. Oh, Foggy. Crouch! Dad. Are you going to answer me? Are they suing? Is that what you asked? No. They're not suing. They're not suing. We're suing them for low resistance to tainting me. Walter! Of course they're suing! What do you expect from poison people? Oh my god! If I could get Sam Blackwell here, I'd crush his head! Be thankful nobody died. Yes, Marion. We're thinking of making that our slogan. <laughs> Someone help me out of this. Not now with the magic trick. I don't know how Houdini used to get out of this. Don't pay any attention to him, Father. I think it's marvelous a man of the cloth has a hobby besides just God. A man builds a catering firm for 20 years. He goes away and leaves his partner in charge. He begins poisoning customers. I'm working with Bugsy Siegel. Peace in the Lord, my son. I have faith in the Lord, Father. If he could hear me now, please cross Sam Blackwell's head! Hello? Yes? Yes? No. What? Hold it. It's New Jersey for you. Must be Sam Blackwell. Be nice. They all make mistakes. Hello? Yes? Yes, this is he. Let's go ahead. Hello, Creighton. How are you, Creighton? Poison any more people, Creighton? How many? Wonderful. Keep up the good work. Two more killed over. They're dropping like flies. Murderer? I can't hear you. Talk louder, murderer. <laughs> well, what did the lawyer say? Oh, really? He feels they have a case, eh? Blackwood, when I get back to the States, I'm gonna rent a car and run you over. You understand? Hello? Better, I can't hear you. Louder! Overseas operator, I can't hear the murderer. Blackwell, you're finished as a caterer. You've mixed your last fruit compote. Mr. McGee, he's a majesty hazard. Oh my god! Mr. McGee! Things in the papers, and I get frustrated. 
because being a little shot from New Jersey, I never get a chance to express my opinion to a real big shot. No one asked you. Your Majesty, forgive us. I will not remain here unless I receive an apologement from your government. Mr. Hollander, leave this room at once. What's your trouble, Aladdin? <laughs> You're in a very bad mood this morning. Let's go. Uh, I live here. I'm not going any place. Uh, I pay taxes. Why? Because this bum has some oil well? Your Majesty, please come in. You want an incident fly? I'll hit him a shot in the chop. They'll have to bandage him in his own sheets. Don't threaten me, you pig. What is this guy doing here anyway? That is none of your business. <laughs> this is my business. I pay taxes. This building is rented with my money. Well, to put out. I don't like the idea of my government doing business with this guy. Mr. Hollander, that is just something for the government to decide. I am the government. Listen to him. He's the government. What do you think the government is? It's little people like you and me. Well, maybe not you. <laughs> I have never been insulted in such a manner. Your Majesty, I beg your forgiveness. Take a walk, fatso. <laughs> That's how this country gets into trouble. Dealing with guys like him. In your opinion? Yeah, read Walter Lippmann. I do not come here to be humiliated. Relations between us are at an end. Your Majesty, and every time you bring somebody into this house who's a bum like him, they get the same. Come on, Marion. For a man who cheats on his income tax, you sure are a big shot. <laughs> Dad, it wasn't my fault. Mr. Hollander insulted him. But Dad, you said it would look bad for the family image if you put Mr. Kilroy in charge. <laughs> dad? Yes, Dad. Yes, sir. Goodbye. <clears throat> I'll start right away to see if I can arrange a spy trade. <clears throat> Hard luck, McGee, but those are the breaks. Hi, Axel. <laughs> I brought you a drink. I thought you might need one. Why? Why does it always happen? What do I do? I'll kill myself. That's it. I am going to kill myself. Axel, what happened? I'm a failure. I'm 30 years old and I'm a failure. Not just a little failure. I'm a big failure, like the World's Fair. Have a drink. I've been relieved of my command by Mr. Kilroy and the United States Weather Bureau has declared me a disaster area. Your job really means a lot to you, doesn't it? I guess it's hard to understand. It's just all I've been brought up to think of. I understand. It's not easy being the son of a famous person. Susan, do you know that when I was 10 years old and I did something wrong, my mother used to hit me with a copy of Time Magazine with my father's picture on the cover. Oh, Axel, I don't find you a failure. Maybe you're just in the wrong field. Maybe in some other business you'd be a genius. Sure, if there was such a thing as the failure business, I'd have chain stores. What does your fiancé do? He's a lawyer. Not that it's any of my business, but you don't seem wildly enthused over the prospect of getting married. To tell you the truth, I'm not getting married. I haven't told my parents, but I have told Donald. Donald's bright and very handsome, but not for me. I see. <laughs> I guess your father will be disappointed. Oh, he's going to have a stroke. <laughs> he adores Donald. And compared to the kind of guys I've almost married, Donald is the answer to a father's prayer. Have you almost married often? A few times. 
and always the type that would turn my father's hair gray. A manic depressive jazz musician, a draft dodger, and a defrocked priest. Boy, you must really hate the suburbs. <laughs> if I tie myself down for life, I want someone... Stable. And successful? No. I want a little action. That's what I mean. You don't want anything too stable or successful. <laughs> the truth is, you never really know what you want. You think you want a certain type. And then, you meet someone who has nothing, I mean nothing, of what you wanted. And for some unexplainable reason, you fall in love with him. I know. I once read a poem about that. A poem? <laughs> Axel, you're a latent creator. Is the place still heavily surrounded? Yeah, you want to see? Here. How 
can you stick the towels in your suitcase? <laughs> it's habit! That was a deprived child! You sure it's safe to go out there? It's all been carefully worked out. A Mr. Crojack will accompany you to the plane. Did you take your hair dryer out of the kitchen? Begin to say goodbye and to wish you a good luck. Yes, it's a pit you're leaving. <laughs> if you ever need a job, Chef, I could probably get you one at chock full of nuts. <laughs> Mr. Hollander, I may as well tell you, the beer you had last night was an eel, and you cleaned your plate. Yeah? Look in the boss next to the dining room table. <laughs> Bless you all, you have made my life richer. Five of diamonds. Right! They're all five of diamonds! <laughs> Mr. Krojak has arrived. So, we finally meet face to face. We don't hold a grudge. Sure, you can't with the H bar. Let bygones be bygones. Criminals against the state. Take it easy, mister. You'll live longer. Only for Adolf Lopert, the Gray Fox, will our government do this? McGee, will you go check and see that the Hollanders haven't left anything? I think you left some cartons upstairs. I better check if Walter took his passport. Wouldn't it be a scream if you had to spend the rest of your life on Ellis Island? Mr. Kilroy, there's a phone call for you and it's urgent. He's Ambassador McGee's a private lab. If I could have my way, you and all those like you would hang in the public square as an example to all enemies of the state. Crowjack, when was the last time you asked a girl out for a date? And she said yes. I have men who work for the Gestapo during the war. One hour at their disposal and you would tell everything. Tell what? Who's got what to tell? Admit it! You are a filthy American spy! Who? What? Admit that! Who? Admit that! What? Admit that! <laughs> okay. I admit it. If it makes you happy, I admit it. I'm not a caterer. I'm not from New Jersey. She's not my wife. She's a U-boat commander. <laughs> You happy? You're supposed to be clever. You're nothing. This was my easiest caper since the Kowalski wedding. I will kill you myself. I wouldn't try anything if I were you. We're all trained in karate. Awa! Awa! <laughs> if my hands were not tied by this stupid red tape, I would have my men come in here and drag you out. It riles you, doesn't it? You like to bully people, don't you? Wait till I get back home and tell the newspapers how we made monkeys out of you. You'll be the laughing stock of the secret police. I wouldn't be surprised if they take away your disguise kit. <laughs> you will die. I will see to it. If I must do it, with my bad hands. Don't make a move or I'll blow you to pieces. You're bluffing. Oh yeah, big shot. Ha <laughs> <laughs> you fool. That's a finger. It, it may look like a finger, but it's a flesh-colored 45. With two joints, a knuckle, and a little head. Idiot. Walter, I'm ready to go. Me too. You got everything? I had finally convinced the authorities to let me use my own methods of dealing with you. This trade has cheated me out of that and has saved your life. But someday, we will meet again! The deal is off. What? I've just received word from our intelligence. <clears throat> Adolf Lopert is dead. Dead? He hung himself in his cell. Dead? 
Adolf Lopert is dead. Dead? He's not alive. He's dead. Oh boy, am I in trouble? The gray fox died by his own hand. I must go back to my office immediately. So we shall meet again. And soon. Walter, what are we gonna do? We're not going home. I guess not. He had to pick today to hang himself. He couldn't wait till the weekend. It's a holiday weekend. See, and you wanted to rush to work. I better call Barney Silverman. I'm getting drowsy. Drowsy? I already took a Dramamine. <laughs> it's a half hour before takeoff. They caught him seven days ago. He had all this time. He had to pick today and this morning yet. It's 5 a.m. there. He did it before breakfast. You see how important it is to eat? <laughs> well, we better unpack. I'll call Seth and tell him to go ahead with his application to the foster parents' home. What makes a man kill himself? What do you expect from a great fox? Is that a name for a grown-up person? <laughs> well, you wanted us to spend more time together. Uggie, do you think it's possible that... Oh boy, oh boy! Marion, how quickly! She's about to kiss the failure! is a dangerous thing. Ugh! Damn living room floors! Susan and Maggie feel <laughs> a different kind of strain. I wish there was some place we could go to just be alone. Your father watches us like a hawk. Last night when he thought we were going to meet in the dining room, he squatted motionless put a throw pillow on his lap and pretended to be a chair. You're kidding. No, I sat on him. <laughs> if Mr. Hollander's behavior seems a little extreme, it is only because he is man torn between a failing business, a failing future son-in-law, and a 12-year-old boy that he misses very much. Dear Seth, don't forget to dress warmly, and eat slowly, chew your food carefully, and go to bed early. And stay away from women. See what happened to me? <laughs> After thinking it over, very carefully, in vain, the pros and the cons, I had a long talk with Mrs. Hollander and Susan about the only way to see their home again. Escape! Did Father drop me speak to you about an escape? Yes, I think it's a wonderful idea. Did you suggest it to Mr. McGee? Not yet. I want to wait till the moment's right. Did you suggest it to Daddy? I wouldn't dare. You know how he hates to take me any place. <laughs> hello, Maggie. Oh, hello, Father. You know, I didn't want to alarm anybody earlier, but I don't like what's happening out there. This morning, there were just a few pickets outside the building. The number's been growing, and now there's dozens. And a lot of them look too old to be students to me. Ah, yes, I see. Some are not students. Some are communist agitators. Well, just how ominous are those anti-Hollander signs they're carrying? Is it a safe place to hide the Hollanders in the event of serious rioting? Serious rioting? What did you have in mind? Eh, stoning, looting, fires. Stoning, looting, fires? My life is like the Old Testament. 
The only thing I've been able to avoid so far is locusts. The holders are enemies of the state. Grojak has many followers who will stop at nothing. If they choose to, they will find a way to come in here and get the Hollanders out. You see, Kilroy just doesn't understand the danger of these things. He lacks my vast experience getting stoned and spit at. I'd better call my father direct and let him know there may be trouble. I want to speak to you later, Mr. Hollander. All of a sudden it's goodbye, successful lawyer. Hello, psychotic diplomat. It's her own life, Walter. She's 23. Who says it's not her own life? I just wanted to do the right thing, that's all. So? So, what I tell her to do is the right thing. This guy is what we used to call in the pool room a loser. He's a Princeton graduate. Princeton makes mistakes too. <laughs> Walter, don't get involved. This is the worst prospect she's ever had. I like even the draft dodger she was going with better because he at least was a success. He beat the draft. Something! May I remind you that when I married you, your future didn't look too secure. That's different! Where do you compare? I have a joie de vivre. What good is security if she's not happy? Where does happy come into this? I'm talking about marriage. When you get married, you give up happiness. <laughs> All of a sudden, Donald can't make her happy? He's an attorney. He has court cases. He'll fill out briefs, there's mortgages, there's litigation. Oh, it's romantic. She was always a little lukewarm about Donald, I felt. I didn't want to say anything. What is that? Is that those pickets outside? Marion, be careful. I thought there were only a few. Walter, look what's doing out there. It's a regular demonstration. They have a, oh my God. They have a cloth dummy that looks like you, and they're burning it. Maybe they think I'm a football coach. Walter, this is no joking matter. They have big, black, ugly signs with our names on them. Sticks and stones will break my bones, but names will never harm me. Walter, they have sticks and stones. Come away from the window. What was that? They're shooting and throwing rocks through the windows. Mr. Kilroy got hit in the head with a brick. He's lying on the hall floor, muttering something about aviation. Don't panic! Everybody remain calm! Okay, now you can panic! Stop! It's a riot! Maggie! 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 Come quickly! We have your usual riot! Walter, what are we gonna do? Try not to get shot! Walter, maybe if you went outside and addressed them? I said, let's go to Atlantic Beach. We'll swim, we'll play pinochle. Is everybody okay? Yes. Are you? I'm fine. Uh, what's this? Be careful! That's a time bomb. Don't! Put it down. The slightest tap could blow this place sky high. Ah! Don't anybody come near me! They're running away! Everybody out of the room, quickly! Walter! Keep calm! Keep calm! Who's Walter? I have, I have had experience with these things. If I could just dismantle it. Dismantle! Dismantle! Axel, be careful! My leg itches! Where does it itch, Walter? I'll scratch it! Get out of the room!
anybody else. Mr. Kilroy got a hit in the head with a brick. He must have a concussion. He thinks he's in the Wright Brothers. Wright Brothers? Lodge a complaint at the ministry and report this to Washington. Tell them, tell them I tried reaching my father, but he's on a yacht somewhere in the damn Caribbean. <laughs> Check him into a hospital. You better get in twin beds. <laughs> we better help the chef, Walter. He may be next. In the absence of my superiors, I have no choice but to give myself a battlefield commission. Until further notice, I am in charge of this embassy. How exciting. <laughs> now, if I could just think of what to do, it would help. I can. What? Axel, supposing my parents and I were to escape. By escape, you mean what? By escape, I mean to leave here and show up in Newark. Oh, Susan, you're nuts. Axel, I've already spoken to Father Drobny about it, and he says we can do it. Father Drogny, the Holy Houdini, <laughs> he can't get himself out of a straitjacket. What does he know? He knows how to get us out of the country, and he says it's a cinch. Axel, there's no other way. Susan, <laughs> why don't you go get some rest? And if you still feel the same way next year... Why not? Give me one good reason. <laughs> Death. That's one good reason. If you think your father is uncomfortable here, wait till you see him in front of a firing squad. My parents are willing. We've already discussed it. Then they should be locked up. And since they are locked up, we have nothing to talk about. Axel, I'm serious. A foggy day in London town. You have no imagination. I have a wonderful imagination. Ten minutes after you try and escape, I can picture Crowjack wearing your father's shirt. Axel, why can't we escape? I just gave you a good reason. An escape requires timing, good coordination, good physical condition. Your father gets out of breath if I ask him to pass the salt. Oh, Axel, for once in your life, take the initiative. Don't just let things happen to you. We'll do it together. That's what life is. A series of adventures you go through with someone you care about. We can do it with you leading the way. Your firm young jog against the wind. <laughs> Susan, have you been smoking the drapes? <laughs> Let's tell my parents the idea. I thought you said they approved. My mother does. I thought you could tell Dad. Susan, I can't go through with this. A mother, Dad, come bring me. <laughs> Axel has something to tell you. Susan, let's discuss this. Axel, if we stay here, it's just a matter of time before another bomb comes through that window. You have no right to deny us a chance to save our lives. I'm not good at these things. I like a nice quiet evening at home. Oh, with a bottle of wine, some warm Axel. bread maybe. We can do it. The two of us, together. 
Be realistic, Susan. How could you get out of the building? Oh, well, we could dig a tunnel. Dig a tunnel? Are you kidding? <laughs> With our knowledge of engineering, we'd probably come up in the toilet. <laughs> All right. Well, we could sneak out on the back of a laundry truck. I saw that in an old prison movie once. We don't send our laundry out anymore. Your mother does it for the whole embassy. <laughs> no, you'd only have a chance if, say, you were at a party, if you dressed as guests, mingled with the crowd, and then left when everyone else leaves. Axel, that's brilliant. What is? Your idea. There's a party here, a Saturday night for the Sultan. We'll dress as guests, mingle, and walk right out. <laughs> that's the craziest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> Axel, it's a stroke of genius. What's so urgent? What does the failure want to tell us? Go ahead, Axel. Susan. Axel. <laughs> that was an awfully nasty bomb that came through the window before, huh? <laughs> Did you notice that? <laughs> Mr. Hollander, in view of the circumstances, after careful consideration, I feel that uh, our situation calls for a little... Uh, a little action. What kind of action? Supposing you were actually trapped spies, what would you do? I deny it and claim to be a caterer. What do you want from me? Do you read the papers? What do families do when they're stuck behind the Berlin Wall and they want freedom desperately? So desperately, their lives depend upon it. What do they do? They escape. They go over walls or through tunnels. They forge passports. They go through roadblocks. Maggie, it's been wonderful chatting with you. If you have any other hysterical notions, be sure and call me. Mr. Hollander, it's the only way. Escape? What an interesting idea. Maggie, you're crazy. You know you're crazy? Years of insanity have made you crazy. Why not, Dad? It's better than being trapped here. Crouch, will you listen for a minute? A foggy day in London town. Mr. It had... This is a matter of life or death. You picked the wrong person to talk to about an escape. I don't escape from places. It's not my field. I enter and I stay. It is wrong to reject an idea just because it sounds radical. That's exactly it. It's radical. And when it comes to things like going over walls or forging passports or going through roadblocks, I'm a terrific conservative. I'm the John Birch of the escape world! Calm down, will you please? Marion, do you ever see a man with a hernia running from a tank? Dad, you read about it every day. Couples escape, husbands escape. Lovers, flee tyranny. What you read is couples shot escaping. Husband shot escaping. Lovers killed fleeing tyranny. You're a coward. That's right, Mr. Anthony. If you wanted a hero, you should have married Sergeant York. Do you want your daughter to grow up here for the rest of her life? I'd rather she grew up here than grew up as an orphan. I'm funny that way. I can tolerate anyone's orphan but my own. You want your daughter to meet other eligible men, don't you? <laughs> All right. Let me hear it. Let me hear this brilliant plot. I haven't had a good laugh in a long time. Tell me the plan so I can go ha ha. The night after tomorrow, there is going to be a reception here. Who's catering it? Will you let him finish? A big party in honor of the Sultan of Bashir. That night, this house will be filled with dignitaries, men and women from all nations, even from this country. You two and Susan will dress as guests. Now then, you'll wait in your room until midnight, and then, when groups of guests leave, You'll come downstairs, grab your coats, and go right out with them. It'll give you a chance to wear your dark blue mohair. I don't like my dark blue mohair. It itches. How can mohair itch? It's a soft fabric. Sue me, it itches. Well, you'll have to wear a dark suit. I'm not going to escape if you're not going to dress. We're not going any place. Once outside, the embassy limousines will be waiting, and you're off. And if we did, man.
managed to get out of here? What left? So this is simple. My contacts will see to it that you are on your way home within hours. Mr. Hollander, I plead with you. For the safety and sake of everyone concerned, we must not procrastinate. The timing is very important. We'll see Seth again. I miss him so. Uh, by the way, Walter, I didn't want to say anything before because you might get upset. But I got a letter from my brother. Our apartment was robbed. What? Uh, they took the portable TV and all your shirts. I'm cursed. I'm a cursed caterer. I'm trapped here and somewhere burglars are running around with my initials on the cuffs. Whoa. Daddy, let's go home. Oh. Mr. Hollander, I beg you, Maggie's plan is good one. You can trust him. I know he seems like moron. <laughs> But he is actually bright and resourceful. He knows exactly what he is doing, and you are in good hands. All right, we'll escape. Mr. Hollander, you have nothing to worry about. I'm in full control. You're a nut! The next few days were fraught with danger and intrigue. I made several phone calls to enlist the help of some of the most brilliant men in the underground. Unfortunately, they had all been captured. Maggie worked around the clock devising an escape so complicated that only three people in the world understood it and Maggie was not one of them. <laughs> On the morning of the day of the escape, they reviewed the plan to make sure it was uh, foolproof. It's a rotten plan. It won't work. Let's call it off. We're not calling anything off. All right, let's start from the top and go over the entire procedure again. OK, Mr. Hollander, now, uh, who are you? I'm John Randall from Washington, DC. I work in the Department of the Interior. I'm married, and I have four children. I was born in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and went to school in California. I majored in agriculture and first entered government under Roosevelt. I drive a Chrysler Imperial. Who's going to ask me those questions? In the event that you are stopped at any moment, your answers must be consistent. Ah, uh, nobody's going to believe I'm Sam Randall. John, John Randall. Randall! John, Sam, I got such a headache. What are you doing in Europe? What am I doing in Europe? I'm making a tour of underdeveloped nations to initiate projects coping with the problems of soil conservation and erosion. Very good. Oh, very good me. Right. I'm his lovely wife, Carmen. I'm also the former Miss Wisconsin of 1938. <laughs> if they believe that, we win the whole Cold War. <laughs> One look at those varicose veins and They'll think I'm smuggling roadmaps. <laughs> Where are you staying in town? We're at the Grand Hotel for two weeks, then we're flying to Malaysia. Good. Now, what do you do when you leave here? Uh, uh. At about midnight, when some of the other guests are leaving, we casually say, excuse me, and walk out with the largest group. Our driver will take us directly to the Grand Hotel. Provided we haven't been stopped at the gate, Identified, arrested, shot, beat to death, tortured! At the Grand Hotel, we switch cars. A man will come up to me and say, Those were extremely lovely earrings. My wife has a pair just like <laughs> He will be our driver. We go with him. Correct. What if a stranger happens to like our earrings? We'll end up following him to Yugoslavia. 
What do you do when he takes you to the railroad station? He takes us to the railroad station and a guy comes up to us, presumably not suspicious looking, who says to me, the grass is green, which for my money, he might as well wear a neon sign saying, I am a spy. <laughs> and what do you do? We get on the train with him heading toward Istanbul. Another first in my life. I need Istanbul like the plague, with my fear of Turks. But you don't get to Istanbul. Halfway there, we jump off the train. Oh, I'm really looking forward to that. It's been so long since I jumped off the moving train. Your contact will assist you in all these maneuvers. What are you so worried about? We'll see how well you jump. You practically break a leg finding a seat in the movies. After leaving the train, we're picked up by a man driving a wagon load of hay. Correct. We dress up as peasants, get up on the wagon, and go with him. It has to be hay, right? I got the worst hay fever in America. Must be hay! He takes us to the seashore, where we're picked up by a submarine. Isn't it thrilling, Walter? A submarine? Yesterday it was a plane! Security precautions had to be changed. Thanks for telling me. I would have spent all day looking for wings. Now then, uh, here is some local currency. No, no, it's all right. I got money. You get the next one. I take it, Walter. You only have traveler's checks. They're good anyway. You couldn't have stopped in the middle of a chase through an alley and start signing traveler's checks? What do you mean, chasing through alleys? I thought this was going to be simple. I can't run. I'm an old man with orthopedic shoes. <clears throat> I suggest you take this money. Incidentally, have you ever shot a pistol? Shot a pistol? How often in the catering business is there a gunfight? <laughs> it's very simple. It can't fire unless you release this safety catch. Then, you just squeeze the trigger. Whoa! Whoa! It's a beauty! Uh, I don't think you should carry a gun. Why not? You don't know how to use one. Don't tell me I can't use a gun! When did you ever use a gun? Plenty of times! Don't worry! When? I want to carry it! I don't want you to carry a gun! Why can't I carry a gun? What's wrong? Why can't I have a gun? I'm not going if you carry a gun! Maybe Mrs. Hollander has a point. There won't be any need for it. I am being overcautious. Why do you have to take the fun out of everything we do? All right, you can carry it. Just keep it unloaded. You'd always have the time to load it. But you won't need it. I've got every angle figured. You can never tell when this little piece of tin can spell the difference. Well, this is it. Don't worry. It'll be a cinch. You think so? Sure. The whole thing will be over in two hours. <laughs> it won't be any worse an ordeal than your sister's wedding. You think so? What are you crying about? She's crying already. I'm sorry. Can't you go any place without crying? Every time we make plans, you have to get upset. That's why I never want to go any place, and that's why I was not keen on escaping. Because I knew you'd make it into a federal case. What's the matter? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? How can you not know what you're crying about? Does something hurt you? I'm afraid. Aha! You're not such a big shot anymore. You talk a good game. Stop crying. Everything's gonna be all right. Come on. It's gonna be simple as pie. There's nothing to be worried about. What's the worst thing that can happen? We'll get caught? Big deal. They'll try us and torture us. So what? We bite down on those cyanide capsules. <laughs> Stop crying. Leave everything to me. Will you please do that? Will you trust me? I know what I'm doing. I'll take care of us. Don't worry. You think I'm going to let anybody hurt you? You remember when we were first married, a soldier whistled at you at Palisades or Amusement Park? I gave him a sock in the mouth. Yeah, he was a little tiny thing. You were, you were so beautiful in your puce Aztec shawl. And you in that dark blue suit. 
With the white socks and the saddle shoes? Those were doctor's orders. I had a foot infection. Walter, will you protect me? Have I ever let you down? Ever? Did I stand by you right from the start when my mother despised you? <laughs> Did I hold your hand through two pregnancies, four false alarms, and a very complicated oral prophylaxis? <laughs> now, come on. Have a little faith in me. I'll see that we come out right side up. Oh, Walter, I've been such a terrible wife. Not at all. I'm not easy to live with. You'd be amazed, but most women would find me unpleasant. No! <laughs> sure. Now, come on. You go upstairs and rest for a while, and then you ought to start getting ready. I'm going to wear my new dress. You better bring a pair of sneakers. Oh, Wooly. You haven't called me that since the Harvest Moon Ball, and even then I said if you ever did, I'd break your neck. I'm going, I'm going. I'm going to read my paper. Oh, see you later, and don't worry. You're dealing with a guy who can handle himself. Mr. Hollander. Ah! <laughs> anyone from coming in, it would look suspicious. You better move fast. The coast is clear. Goodbye, Axel. I'll speak to you in a few days. We have some future plans to discuss.
kissed me like that in 25 years. That was you? What are we gonna do? Try and appear casual. I am appearing casual. <laughs> you know, Walter, you can tell you're wearing a gun. Get out of here, you cannot. There's a big bulge under your shoulder. It's the way I'm built. It's not the way you're built. You don't have a handle. Leave me alone. Put it upstairs. We need it. We don't need it. You shot Mr. Kilroy today. It's dangerous. It went off accidentally. Walter, people are staring at your bulge. A foggy day. day. In London town. <laughs> we have not met, have we? I'm John Randall from Washington, D.C. I work in the Department of the Interior. I'm married and I have four children. I was born in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and went to school in California. I majored in agriculture first at the government under Roosevelt. I drive a Chrysler Imperial. I'm John Randall! And I'm his lovely wife, Carmen. How do you do? You're Miss Kasnar, and this is the Countess Wilhelmina Bardoni. John! <laughs> is extraordinary. Have you tasted it? Mmm, exquisite. Yes, rather diffident and ephemeral, wouldn't you say, Mr. Randall? Mm, the bouquet is subtly demure and yet the flavor is playfully articulate. Esquire magazine. <laughs> How long have you been here? Two Just weeks. a few days. <laughs> Two few weeks. Days. We're at the big hotel. We're at the grand hotel. I don't care for it. It's beautiful. Well, we really must be going. Come, Walter. Walter. <laughs> How amusing. My own wife forgets I'm Sam Randall. Sam. Uh, John. John, Sam, Walter. My real name is Randall John Sam, but Everyone in Washington confused it with Lyndon Johnson. John Sam Johnson. I kept getting all his meat bills and phone messages. How interesting. Uh, let's go. We're doing Afghanistan. Uh, Tunisia. Afghanistan, Tunisia. Come on, Marion. Marion? I'm his lovely wife, Carmen. Oh, allow me. Cigarette lighter. Oh, may I have a light? <laughs> Lousy zippos never work. No matter. Well, we must be going. The party is about over, and I hate to be the last to leave. Lucky those zippos never work. Come on, Marion. We meet again. What do you do? Roll a drunk and steal his invitation? You're all dressed up. Are you going someplace? Grodek, Dio von Gogh for you. Urgent. Why don't you take it up in my room? It's quiet up there. Hurry, they're calling. I will deal with them right now. Go. Where are they? They were gone. Once they get past the police at the gate, the rest is not hard. If we don't hear from them in the next two minutes, we can assume they've made it. By now, they're going down the front steps of the embassy. <laughs> now, they're going into the car, slowly, deliberately. Now they're up to the gate. They're going through all together. There's no reason for the police to stop them. I wonder if this is happening in any other embassy. What is that? Oh, Axel, look out the window. It's terrible. Walter, how could you do it? It was dark. I couldn't see anything. Dad? How could you do it? How could you attempt an escape? Dad, the 
the situation called for something bold. If it had worked, we'd all be heroes. But it failed! Like everything you do fails. Picketing, riots, bombs. This never happened in my embassy before. And this morning, a devout priest produced a seven spades for my ear. Father Drobny was trying to cheer you up, sir. I'll get you for this, Axel. I'll find a way. I promise. Excuse me. I'm finished with the Miss Hollander. By the way, your mother called. She wants you to mail her your birth certificate. Through two world wars without a scratch, only to be shot by a caterer. Axel, I'm sorry. It's all our fault. No, it isn't. But now they've doubled the guard outside. Well, McGee, it was a nice try. Unfortunately, I shot the boss, but them's the brakes. I guess we're here for good now. I got you into this, and I promise I will get you out. Well, I'm ready, willing, and able to try anything. I feel I've been toughened up by our first attempt. Now that I've drawn blood, true it was your father's. What was that? It's the Sultan of Bashir and his wife. And are they unconscious? It serves them right. They drank up enough alcohol last night to rub down the Green Bay Packers. <laughs> I better call Barney Silverman. He's probably still out at Montauk Point with the station wagon waiting for us to surface. Chef! The Sultan and his wife have had a little too much party. You'd better put them to bed. If you have any trouble carrying the Sultan, there's a dolly downstairs. <laughs> And find some pajamas for them. Pajamas. Pajamas. Pajamas? Pajamas. <laughs> McKee, why are you looking at me like that and repeating the word pajamas? I don't bet it would work. Axel, what are you thinking? Father Drobny, come here quickly. McKee, if there's something going through that mind of yours beside the usual cattle stampede, you want to tell us? Size is about right. I know what you're thinking, but there's two of them and three of us. Shh. No one saw them leave last night. So if they leave now, it'll look perfectly natural. Except underneath those royal robes will not be his majesty at all, but the phantom caterer. It sounds great. It won't work, but it sounds great. It's just crazy enough to work. You two change quickly. Oh, what about me? I'll come to you. Chef, please assist them. Axel, are you sure you know what you're doing? Susan, for the first time since this whole thing started, I feel in complete control. This is going to work. You gold? Yes, Father. Are your contacts still ready to go on a moment's notice? Yes. I am sure! Then alert them quickly. Axel, this is so thrilling. You're actually having an idea. Susan, every now and then, fate comes along, takes a man by the hand, and enables him to build a mountain. Oh, Axel, how corny! <laughs> I am going to get you all home safely. Right now. Yes, the storm we were expecting will be little lag. Uh huh. Uh huh. Ah, oh, uh huh. Yes, I believe all the same precautions are in order. Susan, have I told you lately that I love you? <laughs> no, but if you want to, I think we can work something out. Ready to go? It's so rich. It's silk. How can it eat? I've explained a thousand times about my skin. My dermatologist says I've got the thighs of a princess. <laughs> Everything is ready. Go immediately. God bless you. Try to remain as casual and confident as you can. And if anyone says anything to you, just mutter something about Allah. The driver will bring you to Grand Hotel. From there on, our plan will be precisely the same. What about Susan? She'll walk out with me in a little while under the protection of full diplomatic immunity. How? 
As the wife of a foreign diplomat, you get that privilege. Wife? You and her? <laughs> Why not? We are United States citizens on United States territory. We're over 21, and Father Drobny is a priest. It's perfect! Oh, Axel! Oh, my Susan of Ride! This is the happiest moment of my life! I just wish your father were alive to see it! I am alive! I'm right here! Oh, I'm sorry, dear. I got carried away. <laughs> Axel. It's brilliant. And what if she doesn't want to marry you? I do, I do. You do? May Allah twist your nose. <laughs> We've got to act fast. While we're aboard the submarine, you wire us your silverware pattern. May all the sands of the desert feel your name. I'll see you in Newark in a few days. Oh, hurry, please. Come on, Marion. I better get home and register his name in the unemployment insurance office. Please remember, sir, you're not losing a daughter. You're gaining a son. May all the camels of Egypt oh, forget it! <laughs> Without the Sultan's help. And just to make sure that no one causes any trouble, he sent Maggie 5,000 miles away to Valeria. Where, for the first time in over 200 years, that country had plague of locusts. <laughs> 